I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture about the J.W. Hampton Jr. and Company versus United States case. Uh, this is a U United States Supreme Court decision from 1928 about the non-delegation doctrine. It's actually one of our original non-delegation cases that brought us the intelligible principle test or first really coined that phrase, or at least the phrase is attributed to this case. Now for my students, this case is discussed only in the notes and cited in other cases in my administrative law casebook. In the casebook I use for my statutory interpretation and regulation case, it's one of the lead cases. In either, in either instance, it's an important one just to be aware of uh, as background for understanding where did the non-delegation doctrine come from it partly came from this case. So we're going to go through it. Let's look at the facts and see what happened. So here's our facts. A statute authorized the president to increase or decrease duties, we mean tariffs, on designated items imports to put American producers on level with foreign producers. In other words, these are tariffs on imports and the president had a lot of discretion about unilaterally raising those or lower, lowering those. Now the law did delineate criteria for ascertaining these differences and it limited the percentage of increase that the president could impose and required an investigation by the a committee, the tariff commission before the president could act. In other words, if it seemed like, or there was a political reason to engage in a trade war or impose tariffs, the a tariff commission would do a study first and then make a recommendation to the president. And then the president could make a change within certain limits. Now, President Coolidge, that's the president we're talking about here, raised the tariffs on certain imports from Germany. And the Supreme Court acknowledged the non-delegation doctrine in this case. It used a Latin expression, um, but it upheld this statute nonetheless. So this doesn't go in the column of cases where the Supreme Court invalidated a statute on non-delegation grounds. Rather, this case is famous because it's one of the first instances where the Supreme Court most clearly acknowledged that there even is such a thing as a non-delegation doctrine, but then said that this statute didn't violate it and did not have to be overturned as unconstitutional. So what's our rationale here? They, the court said that Congress cannot possibly micromanage each individual tariff all the time. And you may remember from a previous lecture when I talked about why do we do this at all? Why do we have delegations? One of the ideas was that there's just too much governing that needs to be done for Congress to address in each session. They can't micromanage tariffs on every single product or import from every country. So they gave, asked basically the president to do this within certain parameters. Also, the court justified this particular delegation saying it didn't give the president the power to make any new laws, but merely discretion about executing an existing law. So we had some tariffs on foreign items and we're really just talking about the president being able to make some incremental increases or decreases to tweak what Congress had already done in special circumstances. Also, and most importantly, the court here held that there were enough intelligible principles in the statute to ensure the president would stay within Congress's purpose. In other words, we're concerned about being faithful to Congress. Congress still is making the laws and the president has some discretion or latitude, but is still, we think going to be operating within a range uh, that's acceptable to Congress or that Congress wanted. Here's a review question to see if you've been paying attention. The J.W. Hampton case, in that case, what did the court set forth as the standard or test for analyzing non-delegation issues? Number A, the strict scrutiny test, B, the intelligible principle test, or C, the rational basis test. Now, this is supposed to be an easy question. If you don't know the answer to this, you really need to rewatch this video. Okay, that concludes our short introduction to the J.W. Hampton case.